Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third of four Lunch and Learn webinars. My name is Shauna Fenwick, and I am your host. This series is a follow up to the Heads Together Think Tank that ran last fall. We're holding this, these webinars now because June is Brain Injury Awareness Month. Our aim is to foster conversations where we share experience and practical ideas so that you leave with new insights on how to raise awareness of brain injury in your own community. Today's topic is thinking outside the box, addressing the chasms in care. While we meet today on a virtual platform, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Indigenous peoples and traditional territories on which all of us here today work, live and play. In Victoria, we work and live on the traditional unceded lands of the Lekungwin speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. Please join me in a moment of reflection to acknowledge the Indigenous peoples and ancestral lands where you are joining us from today. It's now my pleasure to introduce the inspiration behind the Heads Together Think Tank, Janelle Brees Biagione. Janelle is also the founder of the Constable Gerald Grease, or CGB, Centre for Traumatic Life Losses. Janelle, would you please launch today's Lunch and Learn? Sorry. Thank you, Shauna. Welcome, everyone. I'm happy to have you here today uh, and joining us for this uh, continued conversation from last fall. So the importance of our session today was because of our research and prevention segment in the Heads Together Think Tank that took place in November last year. Kicks in the Nanaimo Brain Injury Society have been actively engaging in community conversations around the intersections of mental health, addiction, and brain injury. Kicks presented at our Heads Together Think Tank, and in that presentation, she spoke about how people are not just falling through the cracks anymore, but rather they are being dropped into chasms in care, and this often leads to devastating outcome. So today we will continue the conversation about community supports and more research that's needed in British Columbia. Great, thank you, Janelle. A few things before we begin. Those of you who are with us at previous Lunch and Learns met Paige Corbett and Paulina Kostecki. Paige and Paulina are graduates of Mohawk College's postgraduate certificates in brain disorders management and concurrent disorders. They're doing field placements with CGB this summer and have been really valuable contributions to this Lunch and Learn series. The recording of today's session will be posted on the Heads Together Think Tank, and we encourage you to send the webinar links to others who might not be able to be with us today. The session will go very quickly. We are committed to finish by 1 p.m. Pacific time. Our aim today is to foster constructive conversations about integrating brain injury, mental health, and addiction services. We hope that you will also expand your connections with others working in the brain injury field. One last announcement, we'll be limiting the chat function to only connect with hosts during the interview. And then after the interview, we'll reopen the chat to everyone. Before we dive into today's interview, we'd like to know who's with us today. And we are once again using the Mentimeter platform for our polls. As mentioned in the note with a Zoom link, your answers are completely anonymous. So I'm going to share my screen and you can see the poll. And I just get a nod that the poll is actually up. Thanks, Vanna. So um, if you go to menti.com, which is at the top of your screen, um, and enter the, it'll ask you for a code. You enter 9908585, and uh, Paige will put that in the chat box as well. Once you're there, you're going to see several choices that you can make. And uh, you may find that more than one answer fits you, and you can answer more than one. Oh, look at that, that's wonderful. Once you've made your choices, you have to click submit and you might need to scroll down to see all of the answers. That's wonderful. So we have some people answering already. That's great. So the majority of folks uh, work with people who've had a brain injury with mental health issues and substance use. Although we got a couple of folks who, who, who don't work directly in those areas. So I'll leave that up for a couple of minutes and I'll just stop the share. We're going to use the menti.com poll for another poll at the end of the session. So you can keep that browser in your background if you would like. 
It's now time to introduce today's guest. I'm delighted to welcome Kix Chitong. Kix lives on the traditional territory of the Snoonamook people in Nanaimo, BC. She's the executive director of the Nanaimo Brain Injury Society and sits on the board of the BC Brain Injury Association. With a background in public health and over 20 years of working with nonprofit organizations in Canada and overseas, Kix brings a passion for innovation, collaboration, and inclusive leadership. When not in the office, you'll likely find her in the garden, on her bike, or paddling the waters of the Salish Sea. Welcome, Kix. Thank you. For the next um, 20 minutes or so, maybe a little bit longer, we picked up some time today, Janelle will be interviewing Kix. So let's get started. Great. Thank you. And welcome, Kix. It's always a pleasure to have you with us. And uh, your passion uh, will come through loud and clear for everyone. So they will certainly uh, come to appreciate you as much as we do. Um, I'm going to start with first uh, the research piece, because that was, um, you know, a part that you were you know, profoundly involved with uh, in the think tanks. And this is around the um, environmental scan that was conducted by the Canadian Agency for Drugs and Technologies in Health. And they presented an overview at our Heads Together think tank. And what their research and uh, surveyed, in their research, they surveyed 22 stakeholders in four provinces and conducted a focused literature review. Both the research and the lit review signaled a need for greater integration of brain injury, mental health and addiction services, and that that was key to improving care for patient outcomes. It also identified that we need more research in British Columbia to determine the best practices in serving folks with brain injury and concurrent mental health conditions and substance use disorders. So Kix, perhaps you could give us um, just an update uh, and explain to folks who weren't at the think tanks perhaps how that environmental scan came to be and where they're at with it now and if this is going to be carried forward for more research as was identified. Yeah, thank you for that, Janelle, and wonderful to see uh, all you folks here, some familiar faces and some new faces. Uh, welcome to this conversation. Um, so our work with Cadith stemmed from a 2018 symposium that we held in the community. And the recommendations from that symposium, which had community stakeholders from uh, people with lived experience, students, researchers, service providers, it was uh, First Nations Health Authority. We really brought uh, a diverse group together, um, about 140 people uh, to look at uh, these concurrent issues and to see how we can bring our voices together. And so the recommendations that came from the voice of community uh, brought forward, um, we, we realized that there was more work to do. And so we presented uh, those recommendations that came from community to the Island Health um, Quality Council for Mental Health, uh, just to say like, yeah, these are the things we're hearing, as you said, from community around integrated care, um, around siloed care, like what can we do? And so the, the response back from the health authority was, well, what is best practice? What's out there? So that's when we engaged with Cadith to do this national survey. And we were just so thrilled to be able to partner with Cadith. And I think I saw Carly here uh, from Cadith as well, and just did an incredible job of, um, surveying the jurisdictions. And then, so what came back, and of course this was kind of just before uh, things shut down with the pandemic and, you know, of course everything went sideways. Um, but where we are now, so we have those national research results from Cadiz, and what we need to do is focus on uh, BC. So that doesn't fall underneath uh, Cadiz's scope because they need to have the, that that national jurisdictional um, interest. So we need to focus now on BC and see, uh, do further research and saying, okay, like this is what we heard nationally, what is actually happening in the province? Um, so we've had now, Cadiz has provided some knowledge translation materials, a uh, simplified slide deck that now we can go to community and say, this is what we've heard nationally, what's happening here? We're, we haven't, uh, unfortunately, again, 
COVID and everything else, um, we haven't had too many steps forward in that direction yet. Um, and one of the challenges, of course, with, with doing this kind of research is finding the researcher and finding the researcher that uh, also shares a passion for what we're doing. So we're looking for researchers who are interested in doing this kind of work um, and, and moving this research forward. So when we can get back together, we're going to be looking at how we can move this forward um, in the province, potentially doing some focus groups. Again, coming back to what's happening in BC uh, that either um, reflects what's happening nationally, but we really want to harness the expertise in the province around best practice or wise practice, uh, because there's good stuff out there. There's great things happening. Um, so we want to uh, capture that expertise of community and also then identify, okay, so where, where else do we need to go? Okay, that's great. So just so everybody knows, uh, Paige has dropped the link to Canada's uh, environmental scan in the chat box for you. It's well worth it to go to the site and look at it and, and see what we're talking about. So kicks on a community level. So you have this slide deck and information. So if other organizations were to contact you, is that something that can be distributed to them to go to their own communities and start asking these questions? Um, that's a good question. Um, I'm not, I know that, that uh, Kadith, um created this slide deck uh, for, for our use in our conversation right now, um, but I'm not quite sure if we're able to share that at this time. Um, and I'm not going to put Carly on the spot right now, <laughs> okay. Okay. but uh, I do really want to uh, ask people to, to reach out and definitely look at the research and it's quite um, there's a summary there and it's quite clear about uh, what's happening and I think yes there's absolutely work that needs to be done community by community but I and I'm also really interested in a coordinated provincial um, rollout so that's because you know we we are so much uh, so often in our communities doing doing the work and um, what I'm really interested in doing is, is learning, uh, having communities connect. So I think there's an opportunity for us and I really appreciate what you're doing Janelle in terms of like the provincial heads together think tank. This is part of it, is that we need to learn from and with and by each other because there's a lot of great work in community and we need to harness that. Um, and so I'm really looking at how can we coordinate a provincial initiative so that we can get some data from around the province and um, and really harness that expertise and be like okay this is this is really great work and and part of continuing this work of the of the think tanks is to take that provincial um, perspective and 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 voice and bring it together Right. And we did have lots of people come forward to say that they are interested in this as well and that they want to see something move forward from the think tanks. None of us want it to be this report that's going to sit on the shelf like all the other ones have, right? We want, everybody wants action. How are we going to move this forward? So I know kicks, people will know how to get in touch with me. Uh, but later on, I think Paige, if that's okay, she'll drop in your contact information too. So people can go to you and ask, right? And I appreciate that, you know, that permission for that slide deck may have to come from Cadeth. And certainly if people go look at that. They can contact, you know, Cadeth themselves. But um, I, I guess my one reason for asking that is that, the more that we're consistent with the message and that we're all saying the same thing, we're all using the same stats, the same stories, you know, that there's a lot of empowerment in that. So I would like to see us be able to come together with a clear, concise message that everybody in the province could take forward. Yeah, so, and I think that's key. And I think Kadath has done a fantastic uh, job of uh, presenting those results at the, on the think tanks, which is recorded, which people can see. Um, and then they do have a two pager summary, which is fantastic as well. So I'm just aware of not wanting to like send out so many materials um, and, uh, and make sure that we do have a consistent message and that people do are getting that the resources that are, are directly from the source. So 
Absolutely. Great. Thank you. So that leads us, because what you talked about too, leads us really well into uh, another discussion about the navigator model. So in the think tanks, this also was identified as something that needs to be expanded throughout the province, that, uh, where the navigators are in place, it works, especially at a community level, right? So the navigators are within the health authority, uh, but as you know, it exists in the community because the Nanaimo Brain Injury uh, Society has been delivering the community navigator program since 2014. So uh, Kix, I'm gonna ask you to explain from what you know, how that works. Um, maybe if you have that information from the health authority angle, but also particularly in the community um, work that you do, because this was identified that it wasn't so much expanding it in the health authority, it's expanding it at the community roots organizations that they want to see this happen. Yeah, and so I am aware of the community ABI navig or the ABI navigator within interior health. So I'm in island health. And uh, there isn't a navigator within the health authority uh, here. And, and that's the difference as well, um, that each region of the province has a different approach to brain injury within the health authority and also within community. So um, we do have regional differences. Uh, from our perspective here in Nanaimo Brain Injury Society, the navigator program, what we call navigator, is often what you find in other community organizations, which means uh, opportunity to, for individuals and families to access information, referrals to other community organizations. We work side by side with our partners within the health authority, with, with, within the brain injury program, within the health authority. So. Um, we are able to walk with brain injury survivors and their families. It's not time limited, so for as long as they need us. Um, and I need, and I know that's also the case with, with interior health. Um, and that's really important because uh, so often we find that services, you know, you get six sessions or these kind of things. And we know that brain injury um, and, and the way things change with brain injury, that people may need us for some, some case management for short term. And then, you know, they, we, things get sorted and settled and they're able to um, move forward in their, in their life in a way that feels uh, meaningful and, and, and uh, integrated for them. And then something else may pop up. And so that they can then come back to Brain Injury Society and we can connect them with resources, support, in-house programs, um, which include peer support, uh, counseling, uh, tips and strategies. So Navigator is really, if you kind of think about it, uh, is that person who is like the, the brain injury survivor in the family is in the driver's seat. They're the ones that are saying, you know, this is where what's important. This is where I want to go. A Navigator is kind of like co-pilot and says, okay, Here's the map as I understand it. There are some things that we're that are uncertain, but here's where I think we could go. What do you think? So it's like that that idea that it's really important um, when you're charting new territory to have a navigator as your co-pilot, where you're like, I don't I don't know where to go. Okay, let's figure this out together. So that's really how we approach navigator, uh, the navigator program here at the Brain Injury Society. And I know that organizations, community organizations uh, around the province offer the same kind of supports. They may not call it Navigator, but it's that same idea that we will walk with you. We're not here to do things for people with brain injury. We're here to do things with people. And that's a big difference. We're not here to hold space for people. We're here to hold space with. That is a key, key difference. Um, in, in how we approach uh, programs and, and services. So one of the things that get, does get in the way is the funding structure that trickles down to these associations, right? Because we all know that survivors and their families thrive when services and supports are in place in the way that they need them and for however long that they need them. And right now, and I can speak to Victoria, often those supports are six months or less. And so then the question is, well, when's the best six months of a survivor's life to put those supports in? And that's really difficult to, to figure that out. And it, it, it 
quite frankly, is ridiculous to think we could do the work that they need in the six months. So that's that's one of the problem areas there too. And then with where we're at in the province with brain injury services and supports, we have two things happening on either end as well that are making it even more complex. So on one hand, we have an opioid crisis where there are new survivors of brain injury who are generally younger folks and are gonna require lifelong care. And they're not being tracked and we don't have adequate supports and housing for them. And on the other side, we're moving into an era where we have aging brain injury survivors and some things that are coming up to be identified with what do they need in aging. So uh, again, if you were to apply that six months or less, you know, how's that going to fit in? So that that's one of the problems. The other thing that you're talking about in the navigators, when you said these not generally, maybe it's not that term that the other associations use. So often what people will hear is case manager title, right? And so uh, super important to the associations in British Columbia to have the ability to fund case managers who can coordinate the services and supports, who can ask the questions, who can go to the other uh, services, open doors and maybe talk about it. But there also is an important piece to a case manager that I want to point out is they are uh, providing support to the family and to their survivors, but they are also providing extremely important and valuable support to their team, right? We never talk about what do the teams need to continue to do this work, and there can be burnout. That can be, uh, you know, they're dealing with very complex clients. Uh, often people are in crisis, and, you know, they're moving very fast to try and deal with this and provide, you know, stability in their life. So the case managers are very central to those teams as well. So that's an important piece to remember. Do you want to add yeah, anything yeah. about that, Kix? Absolutely. And I would say that in addition to supporting uh, brain injury survivors and families and, and being part of the team, we are fielding calls and this is part of our work is to is to build partnerships in the community between uh, different service providers and across sectors we are fielding calls from folks from other service providers who say oh i'm here you know i work in mental health substance use i've got somebody with a brain injury what do i do what what kind of support so we are not only case managing our clients uh, but we are providing support for those clients who are in other agencies with brain injuries. They may, and, and of course, like if they're getting the support in that other place and they found a home there, absolutely, like we don't want, we're not possessive. <laughs> it's like, great, if that person is getting what they need and we can support them there in that, in that home, perfect. But that's a lot of what we do as well, right. is that we're not just looking after our clients, which is who we get funding for, like the number of individual clients, here you go. We're supporting other people's clients with brain injuries, with that information and support. And, and you know, like, and that doesn't necessarily get counted because right. they don't come under NDIS client criteria, but we are here to support other service providers. And we do a lot of that. And we've been right. doing a lot of that. Uh, especially over the last year. So you're you're working to meet the needs of the community as well, above and beyond what you're funded for, which is fantastic. And I know that many of those associations in the province do as well. So, you know, brings us to, you know, time for our last question. Um, one, another important piece that was identified in the think tanks was that Families and survivors said, we need one-stop services. We need to see that there's collaboration between professionals, which is what you're speaking about, Kicks. that we want integrated care for brain injury survivors and their families. We want housing with appropriate wraparound supports, right? All of that is a huge wish list. And so I guess I'm going to ask you in part, you know, if there's just one to start with, you know, what would you feel would be the most helpful to folks who are listening right now? But the other kicks is because you are, I mean, you work your magic to open these doors. Not everybody gets as far as you do in talking with other organizations. And I know that I've experienced that. Well, that's brain injury, deal with that, then come and talk to us. So maybe speak to that. How do people reach out to other community agencies to begin building these coalitions? And maybe even that will springboard off to how do we expand what you and I have been working on and the think tanks have been working on to make this a provincial rollout? 
Yeah, thank you for that question. Easy, easy peasy. Um, so first of all, yeah, I think the integrated care piece is really, really important. Um, and that collaboration piece is really important uh, because as I just said, you know, when you have, we're, we're complex individuals and you, you have someone who has a brain injury, but they may ha they have other concurrent issues happening. If they land somewhere else outside of a brain injury specific organization, we want to make sure that brain injury support is also uh, available and it may not come through our agency, but we want to make sure that whoever is providing those supports for that person at least has our number in their back pocket. Because I don't, it's such a huge, huge issue that um, it's, it's not just one organization that's going to be able to move the needle. And we need to be able to, to offer that support to each other and know who's who in the zoo. Right, and, and to be able to say, okay, like how, how, does, this, how does this work as a collective impact uh, model or, or approach where we're all contributing our piece uh, to the, the health and inclusion and safety of our communities. And that's kind of where I come from. I come from a public health um, approach. And so that, that integrated collaborative care is really important. And it also takes the burden off of, or it can take the burden off of families to figure it out. Because figuring this out is really, really hard. And, and I come from, I say that coming from a place of, of living and breathing brain injury, you know, as, as, a, as a professional, but also as a family member of someone who has a brain injury and be like, okay, I, this is my wheelhouse. This is where I live. And this is our conversation previously. And this is hard for me to figure this all out. So, and, you know, again, we talked about those chasms in care being dropped off into the community. And we don't have that kind of approach where someone knocks on your door and says, oh, hey, you were discharged. You have this. I'm just calling to check in. That's what Navigator is, is set up to do. But if we don't get the, the referrals from our community partners, we don't know who's out there, then we're, we're not able to, to show up and, and support. So that communication and collaboration and integration is so important. Um, the other piece I, I wanted to touch on is that the way that uh, we approach um, partnerships is that um, we don't necessarily feel that everyone needs to get on the brain injury bandwagon that we also need to support other health initiatives that we know cross over with brain injury. So for example, um, NBIS sits at the table at the Nanaimo uh, Homeless Coalition. So we sit at the table and we also, to, to try to understand aspects that are kind of beyond our scope and, and lend our voice to that as well and say, yeah, this is, this is important. So, so we've done that in different aspects is to not only get brain injury on our, get people to join our, our, our call, but also to join other organizations say like, yeah, that's really important. That issue, what they're working on is really important and they need, and they need support and, and the spotlight as well. Right. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Shauna. You've given us some great, um, you know, things to chew on, kicks, but especially about how to keep the conversations going in your own community. Thanks, Kix and Janelle for so much. I've got a long list of, of notes that I've made, probably um, at least eight different things that really stood out for me, Kix, from um, the interview. Uh, two in particular, one is around raising awareness of, of the need for integration of services and some of the gaps and that, that research is such a valuable tool for us to use so that when we talk to policymakers, it's not just my good idea. This is actually demonstrated in the research. There is evidence. So that's a really important thing to use what's out there. The CADOTH report is great. And to see if we can uh, build on that research base. Now, the second thing you, you mentioned that really stood out for me was about creating connections across the community. How can you make connections, certainly across uh, the community for uh, those services that are 
provided for people with brain injury, mental health and addictions, but also beyond because there's lots of crossover of all of that. So, so those really stood out for me. So thank you, Kix, that, that was great. There's so much to talk about. Uh, the navigator case manager too. Uh, so what we'd like you to do is uh, go into breakout rooms. We're gonna move to breakout rooms of approximately two to three people per room. And then while our, our focus is on expanding awareness of integrating brain injury services, we really hope that you'll either meet some new people or strengthen the connections with folks you already know. Building a network of people working to raise awareness of brain injury is a secondary goal of these sessions. I'm just gonna share my screen briefly again to, to show you our questions, our breakout room questions. They're pretty simple today. There's two. Now, the first one is what's, what's working really well in your community with respect to integrating services. And I think sometimes it's easier to share what's not working, uh, but to start with sharing, what are some of the really good things? What are the good examples? And by sharing those ideas, sometimes people can take it to their own community. And then what is the biggest chasm in care in your community? What's the biggest gap? Where, where really, um, what's the biggest piece that, that needs to be addressed? Uh, when you come back, I'll ask for volunteers to report back about what you learned um, in your conversation. Uh, we saw in the uh, poll that many of you are already working with people who have brain injuries, mental health and addiction. So there will be lots to share. Um, if you're from different communities, there may be some things that work in one community that don't exist in another. So this is part of the sharing that, that we're hoping you'll be able to do. You're going to have about 10 minutes in the breakout rooms. Please turn your video on and unmute your microphone when you enter the room. Make sure that everybody gets to speak. Uh, begin with a brief introduction and where you work and live. You'll get a notice when there are 60 seconds left in the breakouts, after which you'll automatically be returned to this main meeting room. I sometimes call that the Zoom yank. You'll, you'll come back. So Paulina, it's time. Would you please create the breakout rooms? Elena, you'll take the spotlight off. We're sorry, welcoming. Janelle. Sorry, I have to apologize to Janelle. I, I meant to click off the little button that says the breakout room and I kicked myself out. So yeah. sorry, Janelle, I was right in the middle of your conversation. And, and That's I will, okay. I will get back to you on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of um, yeah. more, there's a lot more conversations to be had. Yeah. So we'll just wait till the others come back. And I've done that too in um, breakout rooms too, trying yeah. to get rid of the little text box and then suddenly you're back in the main room. So welcome back, Kix and Janelle. We've got other mm -hmm. people coming back now too. So wonderful, wonderful. Welcome back everyone. I, I hope you uh, had a good conversation. There wasn't too much of a yank coming back. So we'd like to open up now to um, hear from you about the conversations that you had in the breakout rooms. So what really works to, to integrate care and where are the chasms? And really in any order, you can raise your hand by going down to the reactions button at the bottom, or you can wave at me. Probably the reactions button is easier for me to see, but I'll watch out for waves as well. So who'd like to start? What stands out about what works or where the chasms are? Is it? Tika, Taka. Thank you. Please join us. Come in. You'll have to unmute. I'll give you a hand. Okay, yeah, that should work. It's, it's Tika. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm a case manager in out of Terrace, servicing the Northwest region for Great. Northern Brain Injury As Association central offices in Prince George. Yeah. And, and what I found in, in our region, the, the best um, collaboration is with mental health and addictions. Um, we, we refer back and forth, we collaborate back and forth, we case manage back and forth, we uh, do case management planning. Um, and the th all the things that Kix was saying, you know, about, uh, you know, a, a clinician could call me and just say, I have, have a client with a brain injury. I've come to the end of my toolbox, you know, in this area, you know, like um, uh, liability or um, impulsivity or, you know, something. And then, you know, we'll, we'll send them resources and, and so on. So 
a lot of my my clients are also clients of mental health and addiction. So I find that it's it's really great to be able to work with with them as a team to help our our survivors. Great, thanks, Tika. Wonderful example of of collaboration across the the, diff the different areas. Who else? Other examples of of good practice or chasms? Paulina, thank you. Um, one of the things that I had mentioned, um, my background is um, also with mental health and, and mainly addiction. Um, I do work with um, the homeless pop population in the shelter. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed is um, the biggest chasm is how do we reach this population that is um, struggling or actively using with uh, some substances um, that either uh, may not want the help right away um, or may not uh, know how to get the information. So um, kind of waiting on uh, for them to be ready and them to, for, for them to be prepared to um, receive services and um, find out more information on supports. Um, so really having that uh, navigator and case manager um, and making it super easy for them once they are ready to get help um, and access all of the services and um, knowing where to go when they are ready to get help. Can I just jump in here? So we're just uh, partnering with the community action team on the uh, overdose crisis in hiring a peer, uh, a peer worker. So not with, because we know that people don't come in, our, come in our offices, not because we're not friendly, but because there are various barriers to coming through these doors. So we are uh, hiring a peer worker um, from the Nanaimo Community Action Team, a, a person with lived experience, who then can uh, train as one of our peer support workers and work in the community um, differently than what we do here so that there is, they're, they're out there providing that information and, and working as a peer. Um, and we're really excited about that. And it requires for us to, to think differently about how do we connect with people um, and, and ensure that they get the supports they, they need. That, that's great, thanks, Kix, because readiness is an issue and not just with the homeless uh, population, but with lots of us who are not ready and often that peer connection uh, can, can be more effective. What else did you uh, learn? What else did you come across in your conversations? Okay, I've got Sue. Go ahead, Sue. Thank you. One of the conversations that we had was about self-care and the importance for self-care. And one of the things that was working well that Megan spoke of is the, um, and Tika alluded to it too, is the support that they have in the, uh, in the North connect, intersecting with each other and ensuring that they've got that self-care support in this um, field. And, I, and one of the um, chasms or gaps that the three of us connected about was the, um, and Janelle alluded to it earlier, is the funding structures, especially for nonprofit organizations where the assumption is that we'll fund a piece of your service delivery, even though the, 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 the full encompass delivery has a different cost attached to it. So there's always these financial pressures to somehow supplement the real care costs um, versus what the health authority funding is. And that's you know, fairly unique um, in, uh, in brain injury and fairly consistent across the province and no, not new. Yeah. Thanks, Sue. Thanks. Uh, Tika, did you have your hand up again or was that from the earlier time? Okay, wonderful. So absolutely, the, the structure of the system and the funding um, can be a big barrier or chasm. What else did you hear in your breakout rooms? What else? Looking for hands. What else did you hear? 
Maybe I can just pop in and say what Kix sure. and I were talking about the research piece that's needed in British Columbia and um, that there, there is grants out there. Some of us like, are waiting to see how the new granting guidelines will be given COVID recovery. Some of that's changing. Um, but in order to do that, uh, a key piece to more research in BC is having that lead investigator based in British Columbia who's interested in looking at these intersection of mental health addiction and brain injury. So that is one of the barriers to getting further research done. So but people are working on that, trying to find someone who's interested. Great, thanks Janelle. We've got time for one more comment. I'm hoping you're, oh, thank you, Tori. Go ahead. Uh, we were, Vanna and I were just talking about how it's these conversations that are working as well. Sometimes it does feel like we have hangups with our system, but Vanna was saying, it's been interesting for her to see the reactions of others when she's not only saying she works in brain injury, but I work in brain injury, mental health addictions and homelessness. And so even by the words in the vocab that you're using and choosing to use to describe your work, you're immediately showing there's an intersection with all of these moving parts, right? And, and it's not, a siloed thing. It's a very interconnected thing. And so just the way that we can describe things and how we can, uh, how those words can be, um, can be, can help push this whole thing forward, can help push this all forward. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Tori and, and, and Vanna too, for that idea, because it came up in one of our other sessions, I think it was last time, about the language and how we talk about the work that we do and how we make the connections between brain injury uh, and, and, and addictions, brain injury, addictions, mental health, and homelessness. So that's really important. Thanks, Tori. Well, we're coming up towards the end, so I think it's time for us to do a wrap. Uh, these breakout conversations, we feel, are really important to make connections uh, across the network and also for you to share some ideas. So I hope that in the breakout conversations, you, you got some new ideas. Um, I'd like to invite uh, Kix to give some final comments. Kix, over to you. Thank you so much. And I, and I agree, Tori. It's these conversations that are just so important uh, because I think Stephen Covey said, you know, change moves at the speed of trust. And we, as, as, as folks who are serving these communities, need to know each other. We need to trust each other and not always agree with each other, but at least know that, okay, like we're, we're, we're at least heading in the same direction. We're paddling together in the same direction. Um, and I just really want to acknowledge, like just seeing everyone on this call, I want to acknowledge the work that you are doing right now in, in community that I see you as uh, a partner in this work. Um, from whatever sector that you're coming from as a, as a person with lived experience, as a person who works in mental health, or, but I see you as a partner and I see your work and I want to acknowledge and thank you for showing up today and showing up every day because it's not, it's not easy. It's, it's, a, it's challenging on so many levels. So I love uh, that piece around self-care. It's really important that self-compassion here uh, that then radiates out into the work that you do. So I'm just going to leave it there and just say thank you to everyone who has showed up today. Thank you, Kix. I love your comment about seeing each other as partners. So important to begin from that very basic premise. Um, Janelle, I'd like to invite you then for your closing comments. Thank you. Thank you, Shauna. And thank you, Kix. It was such a great conversation uh, for everybody for participating. And I do want to say that, you know, to see that Nanaimo Brain Injury Society are having these conversations in their community. And then as Tika said, you know, in Terrace and Northern Brain Injury Association, they've been able to bridge these gaps by building, you know, collaboration together. You know, the reality is that is not the experience everywhere in British Columbia yet. But this is proof that it can happen. This is proof that it can be done. There has to be this will to create this change and do that. And I do want to acknowledge Northern Brain Injury Association for their fantastic videos. If you're ever looking for resources, go to their website. I go there often and I refer people to their videos. Uh, so thank you both for your input on that. 
Uh, what I do want to encourage people for sure is to go to our headstogetherthinktank.com website, download our full report from last fall, the infographic that we developed uh, talking about these intersections. By all means, share them, especially with all levels of government, because we want to see that people come together on all levels. They there is some responsibility here uh, and for your community partners. So feel free to share that far and wide. Also, our previous uh, thing, uh, Lunch and Learn segments are already posted there. If you weren't able to attend the last two weeks, you can go and watch that. And I do invite you to come next week because um, I am in Langford. Uh, Alistair McGregor happens to be my MP, uh, but he is coming on to talk about uh, the federal responsibility and brain injury and what that looks like. So I know it'll be an engaging conversation. I invite you all to come back next week. Thank you. Great, thanks Janelle. Now it's your turn. We'd like to finish off with a final poll and I'll share my screen here. Um, back on menti.com as again, so mentimeter.com. And we're asking you the question, what one change, just one change would make the biggest difference to improve the integration of services in your community? Your code is 9908585. What one change would make the biggest difference to improve the integration of services in your community? And you can make as many um, answers as you'd like. We'll leave that open for a few uh, moments as I close out this session. So we'll leave that. You can put as many answers as you want. What one change would make the biggest difference? What's the biggest lever for change in your community? Wonderful. And as the answers are coming up, I'd like to um, give thanks and show gratitude for those who have made today's webinar possible, certainly to our, our guest, Kix. Kix, you bring just uh, such a, a generous and kind um, approach and attitude with, uh, combined with your knowledge. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. To all our team members, to Janelle for your vision and your commitment to brain injury care, to uh, Dale, who was here for a while in the beginning, she's been standing by for tech support, but. I think she's lonely. Nobody's calling her. So you're doing really well. And to Paulina and Paige for your active Zoom support. Uh, most of all, we really want to thank all of you for coming today to being part of these webinars. Uh, it's by increasing the connections across uh, people in the brain injury field that we'll be able to work together to raise awareness. I see the answers are coming in. I'm going to stop sharing the screen, but that will remain open for probably five or 10 minutes after the end of the session. I'd uh, really like to invite you all back next week. I'm looking forward so much to having the Honourable um, Alistair McGregor, a member of Parliament, talk to us about um, the, our topic, before you mark the ballot, government responsibility at all levels. And with probably a federal election coming up and that'll give us good practice for the next uh, provincial and municipal ones. So thanks everyone for coming. We hope to see you uh, back here uh, next week for our fourth and final uh, June Brain Injury Awareness Lunch and Learn. Bye all, thanks a lot. <laughs>